So a while back, depending on my procrastination skills, the popular edutainment YouTuber CGP Grey released a video where he evaluated and graded every state flag in the United States on everybody's favorite ranking system, the Humble Tier List. Now, after seeing this video, I thought, hey, Canada's got some flags too, maybe I should give this ranking thing a go. I mean, isn't Canada just the other side of the same can America coin? For this video, we are going to be putting Canada's flags on a tier list using the same five criteria in Gray's video. Number one, keep it simple, something a child could draw. Even if they have to simplify it, it's good enough. Two, make it distinct at a distance. A flag is not something that is looked up at close. There should be no tiny details. Three, colors or fewer, unless you really know what you're doing, but if you think you do, you probably don't. Four, symbols, have them. The designs, colors, and symbols on your flag should mean things. And five, words on a flag. The ideal number is zero, and a flag is not a name tag. Thankfully, we won't need to use the last rule because none of the flags we're looking at today have any writing. Also, I'll do my best to judge each flag only on its design and not the place it represents. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at our first and probably one of our more uninspired flags, Ontario. Look, you put your provincial seal on the red ensign, a design motif inspired by the previous Canadian flags. In terms of distinctness, it is is awfully similar to Manitoba's flag, especially when the wind stops. However, as the home of the nation's capital, a Canada-inspired flag is to be expected. Overall, I'm gonna have to put this one in D tier. Next up, we have everyone's preferred political punching bag, it's Quebec. Politics aside, you've actually done some really great work on your flag. I mean, it has the ever-French fleur de lis placed on a simple yet elegant white-on-blue cross. It's so simple, yet so symbolic at the same time. I'm just gonna go out and say it, this is an S-tier flag. All right, next up is Canada's very own ocean playground, Nova Scotia. You know, for a province literally named New Scotland, you really did go all out with the whole Scotland motif. You started with the Scottish flag, but inverted, then you added the Scottish royal coat of arms on top of it for ultimate Scotception. For the crafted creativity and simple symbolism, I'm gonna give it an A. Now, New Brunswick. Look, I have mixed feelings about your flag. I mean, it certainly looks cool, but honestly, it's just way too detailed for a flag. This design would be much more suited for heraldry, say, a coat of arms. What's that, Brunzi? This flag is literally just your coat of arms stretched into a rectangle? C tier. At least it looks cool. Up next is the very real province of your friend's very real Canadian girlfriend, Manitoba. Jokes aside, Manitoba's flag does look awfully similar to Ontario's, don't you think? Come on, Manitoba. You could have done so much better. D tier. Up next is beautiful British Columbia. I mean, for a province named British Columbia, I just have to expect the Union Jack to make an appearance. Also, we're just gonna go ahead and ignore this terrible, needless crown you've just slapped on the literal symbol of the British monarchy. Anyway, on top of that, you've added a rather detailed setting sun to remind everyone that you're the westernmost province, the last province to see the sun set every evening. Honestly, this flag is a bit busy for my taste, but nonetheless, I'm gonna pass it with a C. Prince Edward Island. <sighs> P.E.I. Let's see, let me just check off my list here. It's way too busy here, the colors are washed out, it's very low contrast, and you've just pulled a New Brunswick by rectangularifying your, let's admit it, already middle tier coat of arms. No, I don't care if you added a striped border to make it more distinct when it's flying high. Even though it's a really good idea, it's not going to save your flag. It's terrible and I hate it. Banish to F tier. Ah, uh, that was a lot. Ah, Saskatchewan. Your flag is at least more interesting than your landscape, with your provincial seal on a simple two-toned background to represent your northern forests and southern crops. And, on top of all that, you added your favorite flower. Honestly, at this point, I'll give it a B. And now, my home province of Alberta. Okay, yes, I will concede that this flag is the infamous seal on blue or seal on a bedsheet design that haunts America's state flags. But honestly, you kind of managed to pull it off. I mean, the seal design itself isn't too busy, at least when compared to some of the state seals. And since no other province in Canada shares this design motif, it ends up being quite distinct on the Canadian stage. I'm gonna give it a B. Newfoundland and Labrador. What's this? A design so simple yet symbolic. Colorful yet composed. I mean, this flag masterfully echoes the province's connections to the British Isles with this crisscrossing design, and the local fishing industry and optimism of the people make an appearance with this clever, hidden trident design. I mean, it simply must take its place in the S tier. Next up, it's the trusty territory team. Northwest, you went with your seal on a tricolor, but at least the seal is pretty simple and it has a cute little fox. B tier. 
All right, Yukon, let's all be honest here. It's the Northwest Territories, but slightly worse. I mean, the seal is a bit too detailed for my liking, but there's a Malamute on it, so who cares? I'm gonna bump it up to C tier. And lastly, it's the one and only Nunavut. You have a distinct gold and white banner to represent this territory's rich wilderness with the ever-navigational North Star in the corner. And to top it all off, a bold red Inukshuk to represent the native Inuit population and their rich history in Canada's far north. This flag stands proud in the A tier. And with that, we've reached the end of our clearly correct critique of Canada's colors. Please feel free to drop a comment down below with your thoughts on Canada's provincial flags. But if you disagree with this very scientific list, you'll be hearing from my lawyers. Please go and watch Gray's excellent video where he reviews the state flags if you haven't already. Stay safe, everyone, and wash your hands. Getting a phone call. Hello?